I'm going to pick up on that journey story and talk a little bit about our journey uh, on our farm in Arkansas and where that's led to where we are today. So she said one thing that's really critical, right, is uh, in large-scale agriculture, we need support both policy and in the corporate world to achieve this journey. And I'm very excited for you all to be able to hear from some of those. It'll be Kelanova and Mars and our friends at Nestle uh, have made a real impact. And I hope that you'll buy Cheez-Its and Nestle Purina dog food and Nestle food because these are the companies and others that we work with and Pepsi and others that are making a material difference. So this idea of regenerative ag, right? Let's just, let me get it real for you. Um, who's been to Home Depot and bought potting soil, right? When you grab that potting soil, it's spongy, it's dark, it's black. On my farm in Arkansas, my, we didn't grow up in the farming business. My grandfather was in the wholesale grocery business, and I drove around the Mississippi Delta with him in a car that smelled like bubble gum, tobacco, and dust. It's kind of an interesting smell. You have to th envision that. But on this farm that we started buying, my grandfather um, and my brother and my dad, over time, we've been buying farmland for about 35 years because you get some cash return and you can go duck hunting. But then I started looking at this soil and coming back and saying, this is powder. There's nothing here. And the, the, the uh, dependence on chemicals and fertilizer, this is just an, an, an impossible loop. And we were seeing more and more farmers. We, had, we were renting the land to three different farmers. We had eight farmers in 10 years bankruptcies, retirement, age. And all of the chemical companies that were advising them were doing the same thing. And I call it, my vernacular is just spreading peanut butter everywhere. And that works because we get low cost. We just, it, it gives us a piece, but that's not resilient. Now, uh, we talked about uh, uh, organic matter. That 1% increase in organic matter is 20 days of drought tolerance. Now we have something to work with. Now we start to think about how do we engage? Why is that important? That's important to our friends at Nestle and Nestle Purina because they're buying rice and that's going into dog, the broken rice kernels, by the way. My wife didn't even know this and we have a rice farm. Oh, I've never seen a broken rice kernel in a bag of rice. Well, they're going into dog food. And so your dogs are benefiting from regenerative rice. The point is that that's such an important concept for us to start thinking about. We need to make sure we have resilience in that supply chain. The farmer economics is part of that resilience. The fact that drought tolerance, we get a lot of hurricanes in Arkansas coming up through Louisiana. We need that Louisiana's our buffer, but we still get them. And that lays down a rice crop. So no farmer, you know, we, this is not a political debate. Every farmer will agree with you, number one, Weather is more erratic. And the other thing is, I want everybody to walk out of here knowing that every farmer, and you heard every one of these farmers up here, every farmer wants to be more sustainable because that land and their livelihoods dependent on that next year. So where I hope that you, know, you guys start to understand is think about that potting soil and we want our farmers, that's our resource. And how do we start to optimize the inputs? Uh, this my talk was supposed to about, be about AI and, and and agriculture, so I'll give you just a quick view. Danny, does this mean I have six minutes? I can't remember. I don't know. I'm gonna keep talking for a minute. Um, the the where where we started. I started thinking about how do I make this farm more regenerative and more resilient. And so I met my co-founder, Dr. Ben Brown, at a conference. And he was talking about phosphate mo mobilizing microbes. And he was head of the molecular ecosystem lab at Lawrence Berkeley Labs in uh, California. And that's part of the DOE's national lab system. So when I talked to Ben and I heard about what they were trying to do is optimize fertilizer with biologicals. And I said, Ben, quit screwing around in the lab. Let's go do this on 1,000 acres in Arkansas. So we ended up creating a consortium in 2016, AR1K.org is what it was called. And what we did is 1,000 acres in soybeans and corn and rice, looking at biological systems and starting to use AI to try to optimize this, this system. 
we got lucky. Um, Nathan Slayton at the University of Arkansas published a paper on phosphate response curves. We happened to come up with the exact same number. So 25 parts per million of phosphate adding fertilizer doesn't add value. It creates, so in the water systems, uh, the algae in freshwater comes from phosphate runoff. In the Gulf of Mexico, the dead zone comes from nitrogen runoff. So optimizing these fertilizer to quit us spreading peanut butter everywhere is what's really material. Now we can start to, in this day and age, start to help farmers with systems and ideas about how to optimize their inputs that also create environmental benefits, but also give us the, what we need from the corporate side is a more sustainable, more low cost emission, lower uh, footprint. So Vaughn is here with Bartlett um, uh, Mills, and then we have um, uh, Kim Sunday with uh, Kellanova. They're gonna talk to you about regenerative wheat and actually net negative wheat, meaning that the wheat that we were able to work with these farmers on is actually sequestering carbon beyond the emissions that are going in. So this is a system approach that we need to start thinking holistically about. Some of the research that we're doing that we're gonna be uh, publishing later this year is gonna be pretty exciting in terms of tying human health with soil health. And we'll see some of the first iterations. This is research that came out of the national labs around um, uh, COVID research. So we actually have a paper, and one of our scientists is a lead PI at LBNL on that, and he's gonna be p publishing a paper to tie soil health with human allergic allergies. So pretty interesting piece. So as we start to think about this, where this goes to policy is how do we change policy to rethink the system? Our system gives us cheap calories, and we export about used to 50% of our food, and we don't anymore. And we still have that here, so it's gonna be a devastating year for farmers. Let's rethink the system, and that's what I want you guys to take away with today.